So the next thing I'm going to have Mario do is a kick. But basically, uh, I want to show you the logic of how I can start a move and make it finish even when the key is not being held down. So for example, right now, um, I can move him to the left and right, but I have to hold those keys down or his animation stops. Uh, and that was the behavior we wanted. For the kick, however, I, I push the space bar once, and he'll uh, make a kick. But I don't have to keep holding it in order for that to finish. I'm also going to make it so that when I hit it multiple times, it can reset the animation like this. So I figured we'd probably have to talk a little bit about practicing the logic for this. So the first thing that I had to do, of course, was bring in a new animation. So I've preloaded that, so you need to watch me type that, of course. But um, the next thing we need to do now is where we manage our animations. That's one of the tasks that we're doing here is that we're managing a new animation about when he makes his kick. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of some of my um, alternatives that I put in the other lessons here just to clean up the code a little bit. Uh, so let's just get rid of this just to make it less to look through. And now we got to kind of consider uh, what's going to happen here. And basically, I need to simplify this logic down, which is um, it's, it's a good exercise that you should always do in your code. Uh, I'm going to show you basically the, the underlying thing here is that everything I'm doing relies on two pieces of information, the key and what's happening currently with the animation. So that's a little harder to manage that logic because when this decision, for example, left doesn't trigger, I don't know if it didn't trigger because the key was down or if because the animation was already going left. I don't, I don't know the difference. So what I'm going to do is separate that logic out. So it just looks like this. This is the difference. Is instead of putting them together, I'm going to move this down here. But in my program flow, um, I have an important distinction now. Is I know the only way to get to the next block in this else if statement is if the left key was not down. So now basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to make my logic strictly about which key is pushed. So I'm going to update this and I'll show you what the result of it is. So here's the keys that I'm dealing with so far that trigger the animations. I've got the left, the right, the space, and then at this point I can conclude that if those were not being pushed that there's no animation key being triggered. So my default right now is to go back to idle. Um, so what I need to do though is this is going to result in some funniness. Um, you'll notice that when I push the space, like I said, I want to restart the kick animation every time. Um, however, that's uh, going to be also a little problematic. Uh, so we'll take a look at what he does right now with that new code in there. Just so you can see that the additional code that I'm going to have to add to this, this logic to make it work the way I was uh, intending it for. All right, so now when I push the kick, you'll notice he jumps straight back to idle. Um, and there's a good reason for that. And if I hold the kick down, he's stuck in the first frame. It won't play any part of it. So we're going to address those two things in the code. So we'll switch back there, talk about some changes to make. So the first thing is that as soon as I release the space bar, this block of code is going to be triggered. There's no animation key. It's going to default to idle. So it's going to switch right back to idle immediately. So basically what I want to do is capture that logic and say, and the animation is not doing the kick. Idle is not allowed to interrupt the kick. We'll talk about how we restore it in a second. So this is still not complete. Um, we'll bring them up just so you can see what happens now and the next change that I have to make in my logic to, to fix this problem. But basically what's going to happen when I do this kick, um, well eventually when the world's slowest laptop compiles. Um, but what you're going to see is a bit of a bug. and he's going to get stuck in the kick animation here. There's nothing right now at the moment that makes him go back to the idle state because basically kick hijacks it from everybody, never gives it back. So let's uh, go and fix the code then so that we can give the animation back. So if you think about in your logic and the flow that we've been building so far, um, this is where the animation frames get updated, is down here. And what we need to capture is that once we get to the end of an animation, 
we don't always go back to zero now. This could mean that the kick is finished. And if the kick is finished, we want to go back to idle. So we need another block in here that's going to capture that logic so that the kick is allowed to run through one time only. When it's done, it goes to idle. So in here, I'm just going to say if the animation that we're currently using is kick, um, at this stage, I know the animation's completed. I've just hit the end of the frames. Um, so since I'm doing my kick, I'm going to return to the idle state. Now someone else, of course, can change this to walking or something in the future, but this will finish the kick and then give it back to idle. So let's go have a look now at what happens in Greenfoot. Uh, oops, sorry, that's got an S there that shouldn't. Let's go have a look and see now what happens in Greenfoot, just so you can see again how the logic's evolving. Okay, so now when I hit the space bar, he goes back to idle, so he's not hijacked it. Um, there's still this other issue, though, that if I hold the key down, he's frozen. Um, and, you know, I can do that repeated kick that I like. So this next little bit is almost more like a perfectionist kind of thing. It's, it's me just wanting to show you again another way we can improve the logic on this. So what I want to do is I want to say I don't want animation for a kick if I'm already on the first frame, right? If I'm already holding the space bar down, I want to let that animation run a bit. So you can play with this and, and finesse what you think. But I want to make sure that the frame has to be bigger than, you know, take your pick, maybe the second um, animation frame before I allow it to restart. So that way there has to be some um, f playing of the animation. Maybe I'll try, uh, I don't know, we'll see. But basically what this means is now when I'm holding the key down, it's not instant, it's not going to freeze. It's going to play three, at least those three frames before um, it's allowed to reset. And again, it's really just finesse, but you know, we should always try and shoot for your best project work there. So let's see now, if I hold the space, you can see this is the result. The space bar being held down is not frozen. And I can still do the, you know, multiple kicking, but at least I'm not frozen. It doesn't look sort of amateurish in my code. Um, and it also gives you that extra practice with your logic, right? If you understand how that works, we're only going to change the frame if we're greater than three. Uh, notice that I could have put it up here and I didn't, because if I would have done this, then I'm compounding the logic again, where I don't know now why this condition here has failed. I don't know if it's because of the spacebar or the frame. So what I'm trying to do is make that first branch in my logic strictly about the key, so that then by the time I hit this default one here, I know um, that there is no animation key down. So I'm sure you can think of other things than Mario's kick, right? Maybe you have a, a kick, a punch, or some kind of weapon that performs something similar to that kind of an animation, but that's sort of the logic flow you need to think of in order to make it happen in your code.